A person who is quite depressed often goes through, in, a, in subtle changes, a period whereby all the positive feelings in life are diminished um, insidiously in a way that, um, that the conscious mind might, might not be aware of. At first, you stop feeling joy. You stop getting the pleasure out of things that you used to get. Then you go through a period where it's difficult to remember what it was like to feel joy or pleasure. And finally, if the depression gets particularly bad, as it did in my case, you become convinced that there's no such thing as any of the good things in life. Joy, pleasure, happiness, exaltation, enthusiasm, all that sort of thing. You, you actually do become convinced that these things are actual illusions. Now that's, I'd have to say that that's a delusion because there's simply too many people out there who are quite convinced that happiness exists and that um, we're back at my uh, rhetorical question, are happy people stupid? Now of course in my case I did believe that happy people were stupid and they were deluded. The same thing I find crops up in Benatar's work, David Benatar, um, in his insistence that pain is a multifaceted thing, uh, harm, whatever, is has to do with depression, it has to do with uh, disappointment, it has to do with unhappiness, whereas pleasure is always this sort of fleeting kind of chocolate bar-y, crack-smoking kind of, you know, here today, gone tomorrow type thing. Um, and the assumption seems to be that you go from a slightly negative state to a slightly positive state and then back down to the slightly negative state as you ingest pleasure. Now, pleasure, yes, I can understand that, if that's what we're talking about. If we're talking about something like getting a massage or um, having sex or uh, um, eating a bowl of ice cream or something like that, yes, if you're, I can see that as pleasure. But nowhere in Benatar's book do you come across something like fundamental happiness, fundamental well-adjustedness. Again, um, it just he glosses over it with a blitheness that leads one to conclude that he simply doesn't believe that these things actually exist. That anyone who actually is experiencing actual joy, who is experiencing actual contentment, is dumb. He doesn't come out and say this, um, but the, just the very way that he, he words everything leads one to conclude that he himself may assume that these things simply don't exist. That, that, that our normal state is just slightly below um, an, an equilibrium between good and evil or good and bad or, or happiness and, and, and uh, depression or something like that. It's just slightly below that, uh, that equator of the, the moods of the world. Um, and I don't mean in terms of the number of people here. I mean in terms of um, where your mood is on a graph. Um, the assumption always seems to be that normal is just slightly less than equally happy and sad. And Benatar, I get that strong sense from him in his work, that that's, he believes that normal is slightly less than happy. That, to me, again, is a pathological state simply because I've experienced that. And I've come back from it, and if you'll notice by the fact that I've made 50 plus videos on the subject, um, this is something that I think will be one of the fundamental fascinations of my existence. What is happiness? What is unhappiness? Um, I honestly don't think that Benatar and a large number of antinatalists out there understand what happiness is. It's that third stage of depression that... that overcomes one when you sort of, first you stop feeling any sort of happiness in your life, second you forget what happiness was, and third you believe that happiness does not exist. Now this could take years to get to that point, but it is a pathological condition um, simply because there is simply too much evidence of happiness in, in the world. And if you, can, if you can say that happiness is a delusion if you're on the other side of happiness, then you could equally say that unhappiness is a delusion if you're on the positive side of happiness. Um, 
Therefore, I would have to say that the bias is inherent in Benatar's work, and the bias is inherent in the antinatalist argument, or at least as I call them, the morbid antinatalists, are fatal. And, and it's an a priori assumption that's built right into the methodology of working out the asymmetrical argument, which leads one to conclude that it's be better never to have been born. The whole thing, from the very beginning, has a very, I would say, pathological view of pleasure and happiness, on the, the, the emotions on the plus side as opposed to on the negative side. I hate to say this, Mr. Benatar, but happiness exists whether you like it or not, or whether it's convenient to your theories or not. Thank you.